And welcome to Political Notebook. I'm Bill Rapley with Wendy Schiller as we speak about the three hot topics in politics this week. Well, we just had another round of primaries yesterday, and Rick Santorum on the rise. Yes, he did very well indeed. I mean, uh, I think it was a tough thing, Romney coming in third. I mean, that's a really really serious thing for Romney. He's got to really think about this. The South, those states are the heart of the Republican victory in November. So he's got to be able to get those people to the polls. And if he can't even beat Santorum and Gingrich, I mean, that's a sign of worry. Well, he is never going to be acceptable to these evangelicals and the true conservatives. Well, I would say never say never, right? If he's the nominee, ultimately you hope they get out and vote. But what Santorum showed is that this is not any kind of joke anymore. Even though he's way behind still in the delegate count, I still don't think he'll get the nomination. But he'll go into the convention with enough support to really demand a major concession from Romney, and I think that'll be the VP slot. So as this Republican circus, as some people are calling it, carries on, you would think the president's numbers would be rising, but Barack Obama's poll numbers are sliding. Yeah, well, I mean, they were going away up uh, consistently uh, over the Christmas holiday and then January and February. But I think what's happening now is a combination of gas prices and Afghanistan. And I think people are really weary of the Afghanistan war. I mean, there's some upsetting things that have happened there. Yeah. And gas prices is very interesting. About half the country thinks it's the president's fault or that he can do something about it. Half the country doesn't. I think he has to look more attentive to that. He can't just keep saying, there's nothing I can do. He's got to do something symbolic or at least show that he's having the same kind of issues with gas prices. He doesn't drive his own car, right? So, I mean... I think he's really, um, there's a rift between the regular person who's filling their gas tank and the President of the United States right now. He's got to find a way to bridge that gap. And you think he can? Uh, this is not a permanent there, slot? A very, oh, absolutely. I mean, I think that President, I mean, these are very volatile readings, and the economy is improving, and I think as it steadily improves, if it keeps going, I think we'll become more inclined to vote for the President for re-election again. But I think he's got to understand this is symbolic politics. He's got to really yeah. respond to all the things that people worry about. Now, here in Rhode Island, we have a Republican candidate for Congress who may actually have a shot, given that David Cicilline, the incumbent's numbers are down in the teens. Uh, there could be another Democrat getting in the race this week. Anthony Gemma's been making some noises. But do you think there's any chance that a Republican could be a congressman out of Rhode Island? Oh, I think there's a, a serious uh, problem for Cicilline right now. I mean, he's got a lot of work to do. I mean, the question I have is, what does Doherty run on? Well, you know, what kind of congressperson will he be? He can't just be a Republican, right? And so how close will he be to the national Republican platform? And, and then again, how will the Obama and Sheldon Whitehouse tide really affect that congressional voting. Are people going to really switch their voting to vote for the Republican after they voted for the president and for Sheldon Whitehouse? So I think Cicilline has a Democratic Party advantage, but I think that Doherty's going to really, if he can raise enough money, launch a serious challenge. Well, thank you very much. That's Wendy Schiller and Political Notebook for this week.